I don't know anyone who doesn't like going out for a meal, whether that just be getting a casual takeaway meal or one of those cereal fine diners. Everyone enjoys a nice night out every now and then, and to make this essential task of consuming as enjoyable and safe as possible, we have these guys, the health inspectors. The police of the food industry, helping you eat safely. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Oh, but Chris, oh, just, uh, if you just wash your hands, you should be alright. Uh, don't, uh, you don't pick your nose and eat it the right, uh. <laughs> Well, sorry there, buddy, but, uh, well, here, I'll just show you what I mean. My favourite Chinese restaurant got shut down. My ex-wife worked for the city and I asked her what was the deal. She said the health inspectors found something leaking from the ceiling. They lifted the ceiling tile and shined a flashlight and saw multiple eyes staring back at them. It was chickens. They were raising chickens in the ceiling and chicken shit was dripping in the food that I had been eating at least once a week. Yeah, I was a health inspector long ago. I was at a golden coral going through the kitchen area. As I was squatting down to check a dishwasher, my foot broke through the floor tile and into a sewer pipe that ran underneath. Cockroaches came boiling out of the hole. Turns out the entire floor was rotten from a water leak in the sewer pipe. The best or worst part? The general manager tried to fight me when I told him they had to close down until they fixed the open hole into a pipe full of cockroaches and waste. Yeah, buddy, what's wrong? What do you mean, just cockroaches and a little bit of shit? How, what, what's, what's the matter? I'm late to the party, but I used to work on my own as a baker in a supermarket, and the cleaners would come in at 10pm at night when the last worker left, and he would be finished by 2am when I arrived. Well, one day, I was half an hour early, and I walked up to my department, and the cleaner was mopping the prep tables and the equipment with the same water he had used to clean the floor. I wish I was joking. To use the mop on the tables to begin with is stupid, but using the same water as well? Insane. I told my boss when he came in because I simply had to, and his face was a picture. He really didn't believe me until I got him to have a look on CCTV. Oh, I forgot, he wasn't even supposed to touch the machinery. That was my job. So he was dirtying my already clean equipment anyway. My dad was a health inspector and is now retired. Of everything I ever heard, to jump out. He noted the trays at a Chinese restaurant weren't clean or warm. When he asked the employees, they acknowledged the heating element had failed, but that there was still chemical backup. Somehow, though, it wasn't hitting the dishes. Then he saw a cockroach crawl out of the washer, attempting to understand how the dishes were not getting rinsed. He found that it was backed up with cockroaches. They were cleaning the trays. They closed for remodeling for three days, but it was really cleaning up in order to pass inspection before they were allowed to open again. At a similar restaurant, he asked about a pail on the floor filled with a green substance. Soup of the day, they told him. Dad asked what it was, and was told it was scraps. The bucket was never emptied, it turned out. The scraps going in roughly equaled the soup going out, which meant that there was stuff in there that had been in there for weeks at room temperature, on the floor. Dad had them dump it as he looked on. You don't need to be a health inspector to realize that this isn't exactly edible. I've been waiting tables since I turned 16. Some of the things I've witnessed have really turned me off to going out to eat. The worst thing I could think of right now is when I saw a manager blow his nose into the salad dressing and mix it up. I wish I was lying. A you know, 14 inch border of mold slash dirt scum all the way around the edge of the restaurant. Boxes that had 5 year old shipping labels blocking the path to the mops slash mop buckets slash mop sink. No sanitizer buckets. No sanitizer cloths? Uh, no sanitizer at all, actually. Mold in the fans, blowing over open food in the cooler. Yeah, look, I, I didn't even bother finishing the inspection. I just shut them down. My uncle is a health inspector in rural Australia. He got several complaints about a fish and chips shop in a small town in Victoria, with reports of it being a bit grotty and people getting chunks of hair in their hot chips. So he rocks up one day unannounced on a blazing hot day in the middle of summer and the owner greets him and shows him around wearing a white singlet top with sweat patches under the arms, short shorts and no shoes. This guy's body was covered in hair, not just on his arms and chest, but his back and neck were like a werewolf. Clearly this must be the source of the hair in the chips. My uncle decides to make a tactful comment about having to wear appropriate clothes when working so as to protect against hot oil burns. After seeing the property and giving a few basic suggestions, 
The only other thing he notices that needs immediate attention is the deep fryer itself. The oil is old and filthy, and likely full of this guy's hair, so he orders the bloke to drain it out right then and there. The owner does so, and at the bottom of the oil vat is a dead, deep fried and crispy cat. Totally unfazed, the owner simply said, Oh, that's where my cat went. Turns out a few months previously the shop was having a rodent problem, so the owner brought in the cat to catch them. He thought the cat escaped overnight and ran away. Nope, looks like little Fluffy drowned in the deep frying oil, and Mr. Chippy has been frying him up over and over and over again ever since. The clumps of hair locals were complaining about weren't from the half-man, half-wolf owner, but the fur and flesh of a dead cat. I'm not a health inspector, but someone in my city repainted their floor with non-slip paint and literally painted over a dead rat, sealing it in there. And to top it off, it was in the middle of the kitchen, not even under a bench or anything. I'm not an inspector, but my significant other told me about what happened at a popular seafood restaurant in my town. A guy working the fry station had a magnetic kitchen timer above the fryer, stuck to the hood vent above. One day, the timer fell into the hot grease. They managed to fish out the main plastic part, but the batteries were nowhere to be found. It was determined that the batteries must have disintegrated into the grease. Being a seafood restaurant in the south, half the menu is fried. The owner is too much of a skin flint to stop serving fried food and change out the grease during dinner rush. So, whoever ate catfish that night had it fried in a tangy alkaline grease. High-end Thai place in a popular tourist area. Go downstairs to the kitchen and open up their freezer. On the top shelf of the freezer, they are storing loose beef, pork and chicken in three separate piles. The meats are not in any containers. They are all sitting on a large piece of cardboard the restaurant had placed on the bottom of the shelf. We poke the cardboard and our finger goes right through it. The juices from the three meats had turned the cardboard into pulp. We then noticed it dripping from the combined sludge of chicken, pork and beef blood. From the looks of the cardboard, it had been dripping for a while. We looked at the shelf below to see the results of the drip. Underneath the meats, in the shelf second from the top, the restaurant was storing three buckets of ice cream without lids directly under the meat drip. We look inside the ice cream containers and see congealed, partially frozen, cardboard laced raw meat drippings pooled in the center of each tub of ice cream. None of the ice creams were more than halfway full. So we ask the kitchen manager how long they've been storing their items like this, and he doesn't remember. At least a few months. My theory is, because the place was A, a nice restaurant, and B, an ethnic restaurant, patrons were less likely to complain about odd flavours. For example, instead of complaining about blood in the ice cream, wondering out loud if that taste is star anise. That's one of the few inspections that made me feel physically sick. The place still got an A because the restaurant grade system in my city is about as effective as TSA. I'm not a health inspector, but I heard this story through a guy who services my soft serve machines. As info for those not in the ice cream business, most soft serve machines need to be cleaned, meaning fully disassembled, scrubbed and sanitized, at least weekly, some every three days. So he got a call from a woman complaining that the vanilla side of her machine was coming out with black specks in it, was worried it might be grinding up an o-ring or worse. He took the head off the machine and claims he nearly lost his lunch, as the barrel was infested with cockroaches. Apparently the woman had never cleaned the machine in the several months she had been open. Somehow the roaches got into it, at night the barrel stops freezing and just keeps the mix cool so it returns to a liquid, and were being ground up and expelled as additional protein. How long has it been doing this? About a week. I can tell you what they didn't find. When I worked at Denny's when the health inspector came, the cooks took all the expired food out of the fridge and stored it in their cars and by the dumpster until after the health inspector left and then they put it all back. I ended up quitting that job after I got written up for refusing to change the dates on the labels of all the expired food, which was one of the primary jobs of the graveyard server. I worked in a restaurant where the managers were good friends with the health inspector. The coffee slash ice cream shop next door was shut down out of nowhere and we were all shocked because they were pretty busy. Health inspector came in one day and manager asked why it was shut down. Health inspector proceeded to tell my manager that he walked in unannounced early one morning before the shop opened, only to find the owner jerking off behind the counter by the ice cream. Uh, dog carcass in the walk-in cooler. If you're curious, it was a German shepherd. Honestly, I'm actually less curious about the breed of dog it is and more on why the heck 
There is a dog carcass in the walk-in cooler in the first place. Yeah, I'm not a health inspector, but I used to be a busboy at a nice Italian restaurant in my hometown. We had problems with the Chinese place across the street because we found out that they had been taking the lettuce that we throw in the dumpster at the end of the night. Our manager used to stand outside and literally guard the dumpster so they wouldn't take our garbage. Another experience working at a local cafe is I was cutting up cheese from a walk-in fridge and I found a hole in the cardboard box that the cheese was kept in. Turns out it was from rats or mice and they were eating the cheese. I was told by my manager about it and he told me to cut around the bite marks and still use the cheese. I left that job shortly after. Yeah, I mentioned this one somewhere before on Reddit. He used to have a job working as an inspector for storage tanks at places like dairies and factories. I went to a cheesecake factory once to test a milk storage tank. It had just been cleaned and was being prepped to be filled with a tanker full of milk. I noticed the floor of the tank was covered in bleach. It turned out the floor manager couldn't be asked to spend the time sucking out the rest of the cleaning fluid used in the cleaning process and, as standard, just filled the tank with milk on top of a dozen gallons of bleach. His theory was that there was enough milk to dilute the bleach to acceptable consumption levels. I wrote a report and he was promptly fired. My 12 gallon estimate is just that, an estimate. It was a huge milk storage silo and roughly half an inch of the floor of the tank was covered in cleaning fluid. The dilutions we're talking about probably wouldn't have been harmful or even tasteable after being pasteurized and mixed with cheesecake ingredients. But that's also a guess, and it's also not the point. Yeah, my friend was inspecting a restaurant, who walked out the back to find a man stirring a huge pot of curry with his arm. No spoon or anything, just up to his hairy elbows in curry. Okay guys, that wraps up this video. Please drop a comment and let me know what you want to see next in this worst ever series. <coughs> I really enjoy making these ones. You just come across some, uh, you know, some pretty exciting stuff. But anyway, if you can follow me on uh, Twitter or Snapchat, I'd really appreciate that. Keep up to date. And, um, well, I guess that, that's it. I'll see you bitch boys in the next one. Bye.